It's not the same as a yearly physical exam with your primary care doctor, but worrisome conditions can be nipped in the bud during Medicare wellness visits. We'll share more on what they are and how you can get one straight ahead on Being Well. For over 50 years, Horizon Health has been keeping you and your family healthy. And although some things have changed, Horizon Health's commitment to meet the ever-changing needs of our community has remained the same. Horizon Health, 50 years strong. They're the ones who raise the bar. The ones dedicated to providing care in the most demanding of circumstances the ones that understand the healing benefits of kindness and compassion. They're the people of Sarah Bush Lincoln, and they set the bar high. Sarah Bush Lincoln, trusted, compassionate care, right here, close to home. Carl is redefining healthcare around you, innovating new solutions and offering all levels of care when and where you need it. Investing in technology and research to optimize healthcare, Carl, with Health Alliance, is always at the forefront to help you thrive. Thank you so much for joining us today for Being Well. I'm your host, Lacey Spence, and today we have two guests here from Horizon Health. We have Dr. Lauren Four and then also Nurse Rhonda Walker. Thank you so much for making the trip from Paris. You're Thank welcome. You. Thanks for having us. And so today we're talking about a different kind of checkup. Um, they are Medicare wellness visits. So first off, what is that? <laughs> So uh, Medicare wellness visit. So this is a visit that is offered by Medicare, uh, that Medicare completely covers that first uh, visit. Um, patients will come in and they will usually with us, they'll meet with Rhonda for a little bit and she will go through an extensive chart review. She'll also um, talk to the patient about a lot of like their home situation and some needs that they may have. Do you want to talk about some of the things you guys talk about in those visits? We update their medications, we update their surgery list. A lot of patients have forgotten about what might have happened to them 20 years ago, 30 years ago. Um, so we update that. We try to make sure that the medications are what doses they take and when they take it so that if they were to have to go in the hospital, our medication list would be accurate. Um, we try to go through family history so if there's something that 10 people have had, you know, that would be like a, a starting point if they had something go wrong. We go through screening to see if there's anything that they might need at home. If they fall in two or three times, do we need to have physical therapy go in? If they um, feel like they're so weak they can't get up, do we need a, a, a walk or do they need some custodial help at home? I mean, they're not able to bathe, they can't wash their back. Um, services to help with that and just um, we do depression screens to see if there's any services we might be able to help with there. With your visits I think they don't just start when the patient comes in no. either. She does so much preparation before their visits so um, I think sometimes she'll contact patients before they come in. She checks with their pharmacy to verify medication lists. She'll also get um, office notes from their specialists. So She's really prepared for when they come in, so that it's a really comprehensive visit. Mm -hmm. So you've got a lot of homework you've got to do before right. you even meet your patient. Right, because they, oh, they'll go, oh, I forgot I did that, or oh, I forgot <laughs> I had that. So yeah, it's a lot of, oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and forgive me, you guys are both new guests to the show. How did you get into doing this? Medicare wellness visits are relatively new. I mean, 2011. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of patients haven't had them, but our hospital's only been doing them, well, I guess since I started the program, so probably, what, has it been five years? Maybe five years. It's just because it was such an opportunity to capture these patients and try to help them and, and make sure that we were offering, you know, what they might need, um, Medicare and, and the um, Advantage plans, uh, is to try to help patients stay healthy in home. It's more preventative. All the health care is going to preventative now. So um, offer a, a scan to see if they have osteoporosis before they fall and, and break their hip. Offer um, a walker before they have the fall. Off, just try to help patients find a problem before it becomes mm -hmm. something big. 
And so for your service area, um, do you have a guesstimate on how many patients you're reaching or seeing? Oh my heavens. Our, um, the beneficiary list, it changes all the time. Somebody's getting older today and be, you know becoming <laughs> Medicare age. So sure. um, probably 2,500 is what yeah. is on the list. But those are the patients that have seen a provider recently. So if, if you're not in the system, you know, we aren't aware that you're out there. If you haven't seen a doctor for a couple of years or more, um, they're back in the age group where they didn't go to a doctor unless something was really wrong. So, you know, there's a, probably several thousand out there that could benefit. And so do these come into play um, in place of a visit with a primary care doctor? Or, because you're talking about folks, um, I know my family's kind of guilty of it, where you literally do not see a doctor unless like you're in dire pain. True. Right. So I would say that it, it does not replace your annual physical with a doctor. So that is okay. still important. Um, the physical exam is not part of the annual mm -hmm. Medicare wellness visit. Um, so they still would need their yearly physical where we lay our hands on them and listen to heart and lungs. Um, during the wellness visit, we would um, do vital signs. So we check like, their height and their weight, um, get their blood pressure and discuss those things. But they'd still need their, their physical. And so if I'm somebody who's actually getting like a consultation or my first visit with you, can you kind of walk me through what that looks like? Well, I would, the, I would get your, the list, I would get your name. Maybe you did have an ER visit mm -hmm. and, and we see your name on there, you've fallen or, or so. We capture the patients from all kinds of different lists. Sometimes um, like insurance companies send us lists that they're on our list and they haven't been in to have this visit. So we contact them, see if they'll come in. Um, the beneficiary list is from CMS, gives it to, um, what was it, RICO, and then they send it to us through a Cerner program. So we can catch them from there. Or sometimes it's just family referral. Mm -hmm. I don't, you know, sometimes they just have something go wrong and then they hand it to the doctor. And so uh, the, the doctors hand the sheet to them and say, you really need to go do this visit. A lot of times I say, well, I was just at the doctor, honey. I just saw Dr. Moore. <laughs> I don't need to go do that. But it's just, so it's hard to explain to them this is a totally different visit. And the visit for Medicare Wellness visit is at no charge to the patient. So we try to say, the visit's free. But then you have to be really careful with that free word because they you know, could go with it and think that everything's free. We've had, right. But the visit itself is at no cost. And so when you say visit, so you come to the patient or are there situations where the patient has to come to you? They come to my office and then okay. I take them to the provider's office. Yeah, so the patient will come in, like they're coming in for a regular appointment. They will meet with Rhonda um, or one of her staff members. Mm -hmm. That visit is usually about an hour long because it is just so thorough and extensive. So mm -hmm. you, know, you go through past medical history, like she said, past surgical history, make sure we're up to date on medications and really go through preventative health. So that's where you're gonna see if we're up to date on vaccinations and those cancer screenings. Um, and so after they discuss all of that, then she brings them to me um, and hands off the patient, tells me, this is what we discuss. These are some concerns I may have. Um, this is what the patient is due for. This is what they're willing to do. This mm -hmm. is what they're not willing to do. And then I sit down with the patient and then we go through those things. Um, anything that needs to be ordered or if vaccines need to be given, we do that then in my office. So there's a lot of partnership between yes. mm -hmm. you two. Um, is this kind of a bigger workforce? Are there more folks who hold the role like yours? With there's, another, there's another nurse at NLPN that helps me do the visits. Uh -huh. Very cool. And so what makes me eligible? I know Medicare is in the name. So how does that work? Medicare, you have yeah. to, you can be Medicare, whether you're 30 and disabled or whether you're 66, 67 and Medicare but it has to be a Medicare plan. So it's not age dependent, it's, it's, it's more not based age. on that requirement. Right. Gotcha. So um, again, how does this kind of differ from a regular visit with your primary care doctor? Where's that kind of line that divides them? Uh, they're well when they see me, they're sick when they see her. <laughs> <laughs> okay, <laughs> not always, but yes, that is a good way to differentiate. So usually for routine visits with patients, when I see them, um, you know, we're really going through their medical problems and making sure that medical problems are controlled or stable. Um, so this is strictly preventative medicine. Um, you know, we're not going into 
either hypertension or their diabetes, but we're making sure that they have resources that they need and that you know, they're staying well, anything to help them stay well rather than manage a problem. Gotcha. And if they come to me with a problem and they say, well, I have this boo-boo or I have this or I have that, you know, well, we'll do this visit and then, then we'll make in another appointment for you to see, Dr. Four, um, you know, maybe next week, maybe tomorrow, right. because Medicare doesn't pay for the visit if there is an acute problem, it changes at that point. So if you actually have the fall, that's where it switches from your court to hers. Right. If they have a, if, they have a, if they're sick, if they have a medical problem where they need to see a provider, then it's not a Medicare wellness visit. Then it becomes a Dr. Four visit. <laughs> and this might be kind of a silly question because we're kind of hitting all around it, but who pays for this? Medicare. Yeah. Perfect. Mm -hmm. And so you say that you hit, you know, a wide variety of folks. What are some of the um, maybe more interesting cases that you guys come across or maybe mo most common cases you come across? Most common are the ones that don't want to be there <laughs> 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 yeah. because they have already told the doctor all these things. But then when they, when they discover all the questions we ask, then they, oh, well, this is different. So they do realize the value. And the other part of it is all of the information is concise and it's on one form and we can hand it to them. This is your past surgical, this is your past medical, this is your family history. So they have it and they can share it with their family. Um, and then we do a SLOMS testing, which is for memory. So you can kind of track if they go up or down on their memory. Do they need medication? Are they? Um, you know, was it an off time when we did it the first time? Are they doing well now? And then the supplies that we offer. The, um, a lady, she couldn't ever get up off the stool when she went to the bathroom. She had to call her neighbor every single time she went to the bathroom. She didn't know that Medicare would help her have a walker or a commode to be independent. Mm -hmm. um, I've had patients come to me, they didn't know that bath help was available. So, I mean, they're going without bathing because they couldn't reach their back, they couldn't reach their feet. But there are, there's programs out there, they just aren't aware of them, so we, you know, we let them know. It doesn't mean that they always say yes to us, right. but they at least have an awareness of the programs. Um, oh, there's so many, we find aneurysms and, right. and osteoporosis and diabetics and, and cholesterol that's elevated, just so we wanna get the medicine started before they have a stroke or heart attack. So there's screenings that the Medicare offers. Right, and it's such it's a long visit, but I don't think any of the patients that have come to me have said that was too long. I didn't, I didn't like that. I didn't enjoy it. They almost like you know talking about their history, and they feel like it's so thorough and well taken care of, which is kind of neat. And I when I see patients all the time, and we talk about their preventative health, and sometimes I cannot talk them into doing some of these things for their wellness, but. Rhonda has a special way with these guys and uh -huh. so sometimes they'll meet with her and then they're coming to me and she's like, okay, you need to order this mammogram now. Like, no, 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 they told me no. And she's like, they're ready. So it's just her taking the time with them and uh, really being able to explain things. We're getting a lot of preventative care taken care of, which is great, keep people healthy longer. Oh, definitely. And I mean, as a patient, I know sometimes it can be intimidating to you know inquire more about what you need mm -hmm. and so when you've got someone like Rhonda who's willing to walk through step by step I mean that's got to be super helpful and yeah. again being able to catch so many more people mm -hmm. absolutely and so um, as you're able to help um, these different instances where you know folks aren't able to have their independence what's it like for you to be able to open this door to all these treatments that are out there that's pretty cool. The lady that, that, that couldn't get off of the stool, that was really liberating to the neighbor. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> she was like, oh, thank you. <laughs> so, I mean, it doesn't just help that person. Right. I mean, it, it helps everyone. So if you can help the patient be home independent and, and do well at home. Mm -hmm. You know, Medicare, they'd rather have them be independent at home than in a nursing home and miserable. And, you know, that's just, that's no good. It helps with their quality of life. And, sure. th and that means so much to the patients to have more quality, better quality. And so it's really great that we're able to give them services that help them achieve that. And be able to also help that family support system. Like you said, being able to yes. take the weight off of others. I mean, a lot of times when family members fall ill, their family has to kind of step in and become these experts in so many facets of care. Yes. Do you ever help um, family members kind of walk through that and be able to show them these different techniques and things? No, 
Okay. Uh, not really. Not as far as, as, as you know, like how to lift. Is that what you mean, how to lift or how to... Oh, yeah, just different preventative care measures. No, but they would just, okay. they would call and then we would refer to who they needed to go to. But as far as being able to do that, there's so much with this visit. The referrals, I think, cover everything. Sure. Um, and if it doesn't, they call back. And even if they don't want the service that we're offering, we just, I just still say, well, you know, it's open to you. You change your mind, just call us. Yeah. Just call us. We'll change. We'll, you know, we'll order it anytime. Mm -hmm. So you don't want pressure on them to feel like we're trying to make them do something. And right. If they can do it when they want. Sometimes that makes a difference. But it's just got to be a relaxed decision that they've made. It's usually good. Yeah. Well, as somebody who has feared the doctors, I, I get that. You want to feel like you have at least a little bit of control when your body's out of control. Sure. <laughs> sure. And so as you are looking through all these different programs and things that you offer, um, did you kind of have to do, I don't know, just a broad education on yourself just to figure out what you can offer to these patients? I've worked at the hospital for a long time, so pretty much I had already did that, even as a nurse on the floor. and. It's, you just you don't ever want your patient to leave without the services that they need. So we already made referrals. We're just really lucky in Erie County. We have a lot to offer everyone. So we're just oozing with, with resources. And She's definitely an expert. There's many times even outside of these visits when patients or their family need a little bit of extra support. And I, I don't know where to find those resources. I always can ask Rhonda and she's, she knows somebody or something that can help, which is pretty, pretty great. And so what's it like for you to have these patients, um, when they are referred to you, have such great um, direction and ideas of what they need to do thanks to Rhonda? <laughs> yeah, it, it makes my job rather easy. So I just kind of come in and tie up the loose ends and order whatever they've discussed and kind of answer any other questions that they may have. So it's really nice. Um, the patients, I know that they're coming to me well educated and ready to take the next step and what it means. And so not every hospital um, offers this. What kind of advice would you give patients who are maybe trying to seek something like this? Maybe they're not on Medicare, but are there resources out there for them at all? So for other patients that aren't on Medicare, I, mean, I think that typical insurances do offer wellness visits. So I think that's something that they could contact their insurance about. As for um, setting up an actual Medicare wellness visit, I think starting with their primary care provider and asking um, how they can go about getting that set up would be the best first step. Fair enough. And so as we're taping this, um, it's June. Things have been changing a lot this year with COVID. Has your um, wellness visits been impacted by that at all or look a little mm -hmm. different? Mm -hmm. They were, we, we couldn't do any because it was, you didn't want to bring anyone in mm -hmm. that was well because you didn't want to expose anyone so we didn't do visits for uh, that last half of March, right. April, months. April. I think we didn't start again until May. We had toyed around with a lot of different um, alternatives though mm -hmm. to bringing patients in. We had mm -hmm. talked about doing um, like telehealth, we could do those visits you know, over the phone and through video chats and we would also talked about even doing curbside visits with Medicare Wellness because we were offering that at our facility for other visits. Mm -hmm. So we were trying to just find ways where we can still help promote wellness but um, you know, keep patients safe without having to bring them in. Um, but right now we are conducting in-person Medicare Wellness visits. Um, everyone's just wearing their masks and proper hand hygiene. Sure. Yeah. And you're talking about um, technology can be a blessing and a curse because unfortunately if you're dealing with um, possibly older patients, they might not be as tech savvy, which adds another barrier to trying to care for them. It Absolutely. does, and they can't hear well, and you've got your face <laughs> covered with your mask, and you can't understand them, and they can't understand you. So it really is, it really has been, been difficult. Yeah. And so do you think there's unfortunately been some things that happen to get missed because of those couple of months? I don't know, because they still had phone contact with us, and yeah. we still would help with you know whatever they might have needed if there was a problem. So I don't think that was was limited. Good. But it's just you know just the visit to update everything. I and no, I don't. Maybe Do not you? necessarily missed, just maybe delayed slightly, yeah, sure. or it's been a little bit more difficult to get some of those resources because some of. Um, like the facilities have been closed. So we've just been patient and had tried to find other avenues to still provide services. Oh, definitely. And so then as we're moving towards um, fall again, taping this in June, but you know, looking at your crystal ball, um, <laughs> do you think care might look different again this fall? Uh, I think it's very possible. Yeah. Uh, I think we'll have to keep an open mind and I mean, I think guidelines and 
the situation is definitely changing every day, but um, one thing I've learned throughout this is we're all very adaptable. We've yeah. been working hard to still provide the best care possible to patients, um, and so we'll work hard to find a way to continue to do that. And again, you had mentioned that um, you can get in contact with folks through a various couple of avenues. So if I'm a family member watching and I want to get my loved one involved, who do I contact? How do I go about that? You could call our facility and ask for a Medicare wellness visit nurse and and bam, you're in. <laughs> Just like that. <laughs> bam. Easy. But you have to, a primary doctor is necessary for these Medicare wellness visits. So even if someone calls me about a Medicare wellness visit, if, if we don't have them as, a, as, as patients in our system, I would still say, you know, call your primary. You know, everyone, Medicare pays any provider to do these visits. So if you're in Oakland, if you're in Arcola, if you're in Charleston, you know, your primary provider can do these visits. So anybody can benefit from them. And one more time, can you kind of walk us through the services that you offer that are free and then where's that line of when things cost and that's when you'll be referred to your doctor and such? Well, on the screening part of the Medicare wellness visits, there's like AAA screening and that is a certain age group. And it's usually males and usually who have smoked in the past. Um, osteoporosis of bone density is usually females. Um, because their bones change as, they, as right. they age, so we offer that. Different guidelines for different yeah. screenings. Lipids, um, which is cholesterol testing. If you haven't had one in five years, Medicare will pay for it. If you already have high cholesterol or if you're already on medication, then it's a test to see how you're doing on your cholesterol. It's not a screening then. So these, these visits are all screening. If you were to have a colonoscopy screening that we recommended from this visit and it was negative, it would be paid for by Medicare. If the screening um, revealed that you had polyps, um, that you had a diagnosis that needed to be treated, then it's no longer screening, it's diagnostic, so it's not free. Mammograms are paid for. Um, PSA for men, um, that's paid for. The vaccines, pneumonia and flu are paid for. So it depends on you know your diagnoses, your, the criteria, if you meet all the criteria, then it, then it's no cost, but diagnostic um, findings change that. And just to be clear, this is something that's annual, right? I can get one year after year? Yep. After year. And that also will cover if I do need like my yearly flu shot and things like that? Mm -hmm. Yes. Excellent. And uh, you kind of talked about some of the cases where you've been a humongous help to people. Um, do any other cases stick out in your mind where you've been able to really help change somebody's life with these visits? Oh, I don't know. There's so many. Which is great to hear. Yeah. I mean, when you say 20, 2,500 people, mm -hmm. right? and that's just, that's just a guesstimate, that's just a snapshot, and then you think of all the people around who need care like this, right. preventative care. Right. right. Like finally being able to talk someone into doing their mammograms, so their breast cancer screening, and then if it comes back abnormal, that's when we can get them their care. Um, a lot of times people will tell us they don't need to do these screening tests. I'm not having any problems. I don't need to do that. Mm -hmm. They're not about having problems. You're not supposed to be having problems when we do this test. Strictly screening, so we pick up on these things so that we can treat it, um, catch it early, treat it, and then they can recover and stay healthy. And I know you've talked about having some stubborn patients. What do you kind of say to <laughs> sweet talk them into visits like this? Again, I've got, I've got grandparents who have, <laughs> I'm just, I'm just fact gathering for myself. <laughs> I always stress the, the free aspect. They have yeah. nothing to lose except for a little bit of time. I always tell them, it's a completely covered visit. It's very thorough. You're going to go through all your preventative health. Um, it's free. That's, I just kind of reiterate that. And a lot of times people will be pretty open. Anything from your end? No, really, they'll come in and it's okay. See, I told you, I had my off. Um, <laughs> it, it's, it's okay once you talk them into it. As far as talking them into it, if they don't want to do it, I'm just starting going to talk them into it. That's just mm. all there is to it. I mean, they just will say no. Yeah. Where there's a run there's a way. <laughs> <laughs> well, I try. I said, come on, you old poop. <laughs> <laughs> you know, 
know, sometimes you got to get frank with people <laughs> yeah. because, again, healthcare is something yeah. that we like to ignore until our our bodies don't let us ignore it anymore, and then mm-hmm. we're, and we're little, percent. so we can call. Well, I'll tell your goddaughter, or I'll tell your granddaughter, or that you won't yeah. come in. So you know, there's always that too. That hometown care that you yeah. can't get anywhere else. That's right. Yeah. That's so right. it does seem like all the patients know you. And so usually when I'll say, the, Rhonda Walker does this Medicare wellness, says, oh, I know Rhonda, I'll give her a call. So yeah, I get that tell a lot. Them, tell, them, <laughs> tell them you need, you know, the family to benefit, so yeah, they come in. Excellent. Well, so fabulous having you ladies on here. Excellent information. And we hope to have you back. And uh, again, thanks for joining us for Being Well. We will see you next time. Carl is redefining healthcare around you, innovating new solutions and offering all levels of care when and where you need it. Investing in technology and research to optimize healthcare, Carl, with Health Alliance, is always at the forefront to help you thrive. They're the ones who raise the bar. The ones dedicated to providing care in the most demanding of circumstances. The ones that understand the healing benefits of kindness and compassion. They're the people of Sarah Bush Lincoln, and they set the bar high. Sarah Bush Lincoln, trusted, compassionate care, right here, close to home. For over 50 years, Horizon Health has been keeping you and your family healthy. And although some things have changed, Horizon Health's commitment to meet the ever-changing needs of our community has remained the same. Horizon Health, 50 years strong.